15 aprile dello scorso anno usciva per la prima volta la traduzione in inglese del primo libro teorico di Massimo Fagioli con il titolo The Instinct and Knowledge, che poi è stato presentato al Salone del, Internazionale del Libro di Torino eh, appunto lo scorso anno. E quindi niente, io volevo festeggiare il suo primissimo compleanno con una lettura e, e che spero vi piaccia. La lettura è tratta dall'appendice che Massimo Fagioli scrisse in occasione della riedizione del, del, del suo libro Il sito di morte e conoscenza da parte della Sinodoro Edizioni. At the end of 1959, I left Venice and my job as a psychiatrist at the psychiatric hospital there had been working at the psychiatric hospital in Padua since January the 2nd, 1960. And in the spring of that year, an impelling force started to grow inside me, which a few months later gave rise to a rapid movement of my hand, which wrote that which had seen beyond the words delusional perception and group psychotherapy. And now, as often happens each time I record the past, words come to my mind which, by whispering in distinct sounds, speak of invisible things with an unknown voice. Living Venice, living Rome, living Pisa, living Fabriano, living Monte Giberto, the last being the place where I was born. Then, i also left Padua, and I left Kruzingen. I left the Freudian Italian Psychoanalytic Society and the word leaving, with its sound, always spoke of separation. And now I know the other words which are silent because they are made of incomprehensible images, always say memory, fantasy of the experiences I have lived. Then, at the end of 1970, the impelling force that had turned into a requirement to speak made my arm and hand move fast so as to make the mysterious language of the silent images made known to me through written verbal thoughts. I had read many books that, unlike the small boy in the never-ending story, did not speak of the nothing. They often mentioned the word passion, but I felt it was a phantom without a body wearing a different mask depending on whether it floated in the air in France, in England, in Germany. Pulsion, dry trip. I thought it had no image and no shape appeared in my mind when I heard the sound of the word. Nothing would appear. Maybe, I thought, it was only perception and awareness of the body. However, I noticed that there often appeared the term non, there is not. A thing that had previously been perceived was no longer there. There is not anymore. It has disappeared. And in the first chapter, I narrate how a patient added to my research and from his words I understood that he was telling me you did me harm because you weren't there and I conceptualized that violence was not only sadism, a lesion to one's own physical reality, it was not being there which in other words became not being interested in the other, not comprehending the reality of the other, not seeing. And I do not know from where the thought arose that made me say to the patient, it wasn't I who disappeared, even though I wasn't there, it was you who made me disappear. And the words came from the depths of my mind and did not say that dreamlike images were the mother. The letters that flowed from my hand, the small sinuous lines, clear and defined, were already there in non-conscious thought. Annulment brought to light with it the word passion and possessed it with the joy of knowledge. The annulment, passion. I was trying to treat patients and I wondered where 
the causes of mental illness lay, had discovered in the old medical records of the psychiatric hospital in Venice the word stolidity, and with the discovery of the normal pulsion, which does not make material reality but invisible non-material realities in existence, there came the connection with the word luck, which made the term the lack of affectivity emerge from the darkness of an extremely profound unknown thought. I realized that had brought clinical psychiatry beyond the observation of the visible symptoms of a mental illness. Then, outside my work as a psychiatrist, my mind wondered where in the human body the pulsion appeared. I thought back to infancy and I stopped at the time of birth as there the word separation appeared. I saw the fetus becoming a newborn child. I knew this radical separation contained the words appearance of something new and undoubtedly or possibly the word transformation. And thus, I saw that together with birth there lay the term life. I went farther because the words fantasy, disappearance and reaction added to this thoughts. The certainty of the existence of the biological reality that not being life contained the possibility of life suggested that the newborn's reaction to light by making the natural world in existence would make the interhuman relationship existent. It is not only the annulment pulsion at birth, to, due to vitality, the fetus becomes a newborn with fantasy, the disappearance fantasy towards the world. Like ants coming out from an invisible crater in the mind, the words became visible, appearing one after the other. Disappearance fantasy and capability to imagine gushed forth from the words creativity of human beings biological reality that makes something new, something that did not exist before, emerge from itself. And now, another recollection suggests how research developed from the anguish of a few women who told me, I wouldn't recognize myself in the mirror, and I immediately thought of Ovid's metamorphosis and the story of Narcissus, who did not recognize his own reflection in a pond, and of animals that, before the image in the mirror, think there is an animal hidden behind the mirror, and, like Darwin's monkey, try to grab it with their paws. It therefore came naturally to me to remember the well-known observation according to which children, after a few months, recognize their own reflection in the mirror, and, as they have never seen their own face until that moment, it is obvious that they recognize an image which is not the conscious recollection of a perception. I thought children have an image that is not the outcome of the simulation provided by the object that gives the perception. Rather, it is created by the mind itself. They see this image outside themselves and feel happy. Hence, Nearly 40 years after the first edition, I do not know whether with this appendix have made comprehension easier or more difficult. Those who have partaken in my research say that my writing has always confirmed my intuitions and discoveries about human reality, which I thought of 50 or 60 years ago. However, the way I write about them is different much less intellectual and much more imaginative. I hope that the past, which has become a much more distant past, is even more memory, fantasy of the experiences I have lived.